Part One of Cosmos: A Sketch of the Physical Description of the Universe, Introduction, by Alexander von Humboldt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part One, Author's Preface. In the late evening of an active life, I offer to the German public a work whose undefined image has floated before my mind for almost half a century i have frequently looked upon its completion as impractical but as often as i have been disposed to relinquish the undertaking i have again although perhaps imprudently resumed the task this work i now present to my contemporaries with a diffidence inspired by a just mistrust of my own powers while i would willingly forget that writings long expected are usually received with less indulgence although the outward relations of life and an irresistible impulse toward knowledge of various kinds have led me to occupy myself for many years and apparently exclusively with separate branches of science as for instance with descriptive botany geognosy chemistry astronomical determinations of position and terrestrial magnetism in order that i might the better prepare myself for the extensive travels in which i was desirous of engaging the actual object of my studies has nevertheless been of a higher character the principal impulse by which i was directed was the earnest endeavor to comprehend the phenomena of physical objects in their general connection and to represent nature as one great whole moved and animated by internal forces my intercourse with highly gifted men early led me to discover that without an earnest striving to attain to a knowledge of special branches of study all attempts to give a grand and general view of the universe would be nothing more than a vain illusion these special departments in the great domain of natural science are moreover capable of being reciprocally fructified by means of the appropriate forces by which they are endowed descriptive botany no longer confined to the narrow circle of the determination of genre and species leads the observer who traverses distant lands and lofty mountains to the study of the geographical distribution of plants over the earth's surface according to distance from the equator and vertical distance above the sea it is further necessary to investigate the laws which regulate the differences of temperature and climate and the meteorological processes of the atmosphere before we can hope to explain the involved causes of vegetable distribution and it is thus that the observer who earnestly pursues the path of knowledge is led from one class of phenomena to another by means of the mutual dependence and connection existing between them i have enjoyed an advantage which few scientific travellers have shared to an equal extent viz that of having seen not only littoral districts such as are alone visited by the majority of those who take part in voyages of circumnavigation but also those portions of the interior of two vast continents which present the most striking contrasts manifested in the alpine tropical landscapes of south america and the dreary wastes of the steppes in north Northern asia travels undertaken in districts such as these could not fail to encourage the natural tendency of my mind toward a generalization of views and to encourage me to attempt in a special work to treat of the knowledge which we at present possess regarding the sidereal and terrestrial phenomena of the cosmos in their empirical relations the hitherto undefined idea of a physical geography has thus by an extended and perhaps too boldly imagined a plan been comprehended under the idea of a physical description of the universe embracing all created things in the regions of space and in the earth the very abundance of the materials which are presented to the mind for arrangement and definition necessarily impart no inconsiderable difficulties in the choice of the form under which such a work must be presented if it would aspire to the honor of being regarded as a literary composition descriptions of nature ought not to be deficient in a tone of lifelike truthfulness while the mere enumeration of a series of general results is productive of a no less wearying impression than the elaborate accumulation of the individual data of observation 
i scarcely venture to hope that i have succeeded in satisfying these various requirements of composition or that i have myself avoided the shoals and breakers which i have known how to indicate to others my faint hope of success rests upon the special indulgence which the german public have bestowed upon a small work bearing the title of ansichten der natur which i published soon after my return from mexico this work treats under general points of view of separate branches of physical geography such as the forms of vegetation grassy plains and deserts the effect produced by this small volume has doubtlessly been more powerfully manifested in the influence it has exercised on the sensitive minds of the young whose imaginative faculties are so strongly manifested than by means of anything which it could itself impart in the work on the cosmos on which i am now engaged i have endeavored to show as in that entitled ansichten der natur that a certain degree of scientific completeness in the treatment of individual facts is not wholly incompatible with a picturesque animation of style since public lectures seem to me to present an easy and efficient means of testing the more or less successful manner of connecting together the detached branches of any one science i undertook for many months consecutively first in the french language at paris and afterward in my own native german at berlin almost simultaneously at two different places of assembly to deliver a course of lectures on the physical description of the universe according to my conception of the science my lectures were given extemporaneously both in french and german and without the aid of written notes nor have i in any way made use in the present work of those portions of my discourse which have been preserved by the industry of certain attentive auditors with the exception of the first forty pages the whole of the present work was written for the first time in the years eighteen forty three and eighteen forty four a character of unity freshness and animation must i think be derived from an association with some definite epoch where the object of the writer is to delineate the present condition of knowledge and opinions since the additions constantly made to the latter give rise to fundamental changes in pre-existing views my lectures and the cosmos have nothing in common beyond the succession in which the various facts are treated the first portion of my work contains introductory considerations regarding the diversity in the degrees of enjoyment to be derived from nature and the knowledge of the laws by which the universe is governed it also considers the limitation and scientific mode of treating a physical description of the universe and gives a general picture of nature which contains a view of all the phenomena comprised in the cosmos this general picture of nature which embraces within its wide scope the remotest nebulous spots and the revolving double stars in the regions of space no less than the telluric phenomena included under the department of the geography of organic forms such as plants animals and races of men comprises all that i deem most specially important with regard to the connection existing between generalities and specialities while it moreover exemplifies by the form and style of the composition the mode of treatment pursued in the selection of the results obtained from experimental knowledge the two succeeding volumes will contain a consideration of the particular means of incitement toward the study of nature consisting in animated delineations landscape painting and the arrangement and cultivation of exotic vegetable forms of the history of the contemplation of the universe or the gradual development of the reciprocal action of natural forces constituting one natural whole and lastly of the special branches of the several departments of science whose mutual connection is indicated in the beginning of the work wherever it has been possible to do so i have adduced the authorities from whence i derived my facts with a view of affording testimony both to the accuracy of my statements and to the value of the observations to which reference was made in those instances where i have quoted from my own writings 
the facts contained in which being from their very nature scattered through different portions of my works i have always referred to the original editions owing to the importance of accuracy with regard to numerical relations and to my own distrust of the care and correctness of translators in the few cases where i have extracted short passages from the works of my friends i have indicated them by marks of quotation and in imitation of the practice of the ancients i have invariably preferred the repetition of the same words to any arbitrary substitution of my own paraphrases the much contested question of priority of claim to a first discovery which it is so dangerous to treat of in a work of this uncontroversial kind has rarely been touched upon when i have occasionally referred to classical antiquity and to that happy period of transition which has rendered the sixteenth and seventeenth centuries so celebrated owing to the great geographical discoveries by which the age was characterized i have been simply led to adopt this mode of treatment from the desire we experience from time to time when considering the general views of nature to escape from the circle of more strictly dogmatical modern opinions and enter the free and fanciful domain of earlier presentiments it has frequently been regarded as a subject of discouraging consideration that while purely literary products of intellectual activity are rooted in the depths of feeling and interwoven with the creative force of imagination all works treating of empirical knowledge and of the connection of natural phenomena and physical laws are subject to the most marked modifications of form in the lapse of short periods of time both by the improvement in the instruments used and by the consequent expansion of the field of view opened to rational observation and that those scientific works which have to use a common expression become antiquated by the acquisition of new funds of knowledge are thus continually being consigned to oblivion as unreadable however discouraging such a prospect must be no one who is animated by a genuine love of nature and by a sense of the dignity attached to its study can view with regret anything which promises future additions and a greater degree of perfection to general knowledge many important branches of knowledge have been based upon a solid foundation which will not easily be shaken both as regards the phenomena in the regions of space and on the earth while there are other portions of science in which general views will undoubtedly take the place of merely special where new forces will be discovered and new substances will be made known and where those which are now considered as simple will be decomposed i would therefore venture to hope that an attempt to delineate nature in all its vivid animation and exalted grandeur and to trace the stable amid the vacillating ever-recurring alternation of physical metamorphoses will not be wholly disregarded even at a future age potsdam november eighteen forty four end of part one author's preface